Chevy, Chevy. You know what, this is an honor, Chevy. It's an honor to start the vlog. Say something nice, say something clever, say something Chevy-like. Hey guys, excellent. So today has already progressed quite a ways. My hair's all over the place, isn't it? I desperately, desperately need a haircut. How dare you look at me like this? Stop looking, there you go. Now you can look again. We're here uh, in Chilliwack, BC. We slept here overnight. We went into Surrey this morning to unload all of that glass. We have an empty flatbed behind us right now. We're on our way to Hope, British Columbia to the Flying J where I'm gonna have a shower and wash myself all up and make myself all smell good again. Not like a dirty trucker. Right, Chevy? It's true, man. It's true. You smell like a dirty trucker. And you look like one too. He's right, he's right. We just stopped at the gym, uh, Snap Fitness in Chilliwack, BC, which is uh, pretty much just down the road that way from here. I'm just at the, there's the Flying J right there. There's a Chevron. I'm just parked at the old SO here right now. Timmy's is just off to my right. Right there. And it's a good day. I'm feeling good. We're going to go up to Kamloops, spend the night there, and tomorrow, uh, sometime mid morning or so, or early morning, we're going to drive up to Barrier, BC pick up a load of lumber. I thought it was in Kelowna. It's actually in Barrier, BC. And that's taking us to Eagle River, Wisconsin next week. I'm not too sure if I'll be able to stop by at home on the way past or not. Haven't figured that out yet for now. We're just going to Kamloops tonight. We're going to enjoy a little bit of an evening there, edit some vlogs, uh, watch some YouTube videos. Take it from there. So let's get on the road here. Let's go. You guys need to go into your special little slot here. Hang on, everybody. Hang on. Here you go. There you go. There you go. You can hear me a little better, right? Okay. Pitter patter. Let's get at her. That's what they say, right? That's what they say, yeah. That's right. That's what I thought, Shabby. beginning here on the Coquihalla Highway, or the highway through hell. We're still at the bottom, so the weather's not too bad. I'm guessing once we get to the top, we may have to deal with a little bit more. A little more nasty, nasty white stuff. It's nasty. Yesterday coming through here, it was pretty bad up at the top. Lots of snow around that brake check. If you're, if you're familiar with the route, the final brake check on the way down to the mainland here. Guess 
we'll see how it goes. We're losing our sunlight, so I'm not sure how easy it will be for me to vlog. I don't have much, much said today already. I was so in, in such a rush to get unloaded first thing in the morning that uh, I, I didn't even bother talking to you guys at all. I apologize. We stopped, like I was telling you, in Chilliwack there, and then we stopped in Hope, British Columbia at the Flying J, just for some fuel. This truck is, I guess it was a pretty heavy load. The, that glass is a lot heavier than it looks. It's a lot heavier than I th thought, I guess. It's burnt a lot more fuel than I was expecting to. My engine is still using a little bit of oil, which is concerning to me. There's a little bit. Not enough to get like overly concerned, but it's definitely enough to perk up my ears and pay close attention to it right now. Like I said, we're coming up to a million kilometers. We'll be at a million kilometers this summer sometime. And this engine is coming up to the time when it's gonna need a rebuild. I don't think it needs a rebuild yet. Not the full rebuild anyway. It might just need a new top end, like I was telling you the other day, new, new valves on the top. Because I think one of those valves is malfunctioning. Like my dad was telling me, I don't know how to explain it exactly like he did. But uh, whenever something like this happens to me, I learn something new, right? I, I learn what, how, a new part of how to fix something. <laughs> Does that make sense? So after uh, we get this fixed, I'll have something new that I can pass on to my kids one day if they want to drive trucks. And dad was telling me that there may be a valve that's sticking or maybe hopefully it's not cracked but it might be letting a little bit of oil through and the oil's coming out the blow by pretty slowly and it's only coming out when the engine is very cold when you first start it up and when it's under high pressure like pulling that heavy load up the mountains it seems to drip out a little bit and a little bit of blow by is is normal i don't think oil dripping out of there is normal that that's definitely not so something I'm gonna keep an eye on and uh, again tell the shop about I mean every time I go home it seems this truck's been in the shop lately it's getting a little bit depressing eventually there's got to be a light at the end of this tunnel you know what I mean I'm not gonna give up though I'm gonna keep going and keep fixing it eventually we'll find all the little problems and then new problems will arise hey right? that's trucking isn't it there's always problems wouldn't be trucking if everything was going smoothly. Here we are, not even at the top yet, and lots of snow. So the nice weather was nice while it lasted. <laughs> Must be nice to be able to live down there. Must be nice to be able to afford to live down there. Because that's the best place in Canada to live climate-wise. There's never snow, or hardly ever snow. Uh, good weather year-round, rains a little bit, but nice place to live. So everybody wants to live there, right? Which means housing prices are through the roof. Good luck getting like a two or three bedroom bungalow for under a million dollars. Anywhere. Good luck. Let me know if you find one. There might be one or two left. Might need some elbow grease, might be some fixer-uppers, but there might be one or two left under a million. You want to buy a nice, decent family suburban home? You'll be ready to fork out a couple of million. Yeah. Three million will get you a decent house, you know? It'll probably get you what $500,000 would get you in Manitoba. Man, you might even be able to get that same house for like $400,000 in Manitoba. But hey, you want to live in the good climate. You want to live where it's nice and sunny, right? Nice and warm, no snow. Hope you got deep pockets. So we should be almost at the top here. Now it's just going to be a high mountain road all the way through till we get to Kamloops. About 150 kilometers from here. Take exit 366 on right to Copperhead Drive, then turn right. Alrighty, let's do that. So I'm here at the Petro Pass in Kamloops. I'm just pulling up to it. This is where we're gonna spend the night. 
about 45 minutes to an hour away from our shipper where we gotta go get our lumber tomorrow morning. I just wanna stay here because I know they have a 24 hour facility so if I need to get inside for any reason or something, then at least I have a, a shelter here, right? Where I turn can go. Turn right on Cockerhead Drive, then turn left. Mandy, my signal's on, don't you see? I'm turning. You don't need to tell me twice. So chatty all the time. So today wasn't really much of a day. Just us rolling up here to Kamloops from uh, from down there in Hope, BC, where I started the vlog. We made it through Highway Through Hell. It wasn't too too bad, actually, this time. They say it's a Highway Through Hell. I've never actually seen hell on that highway before. But they made a whole TV show about it, so it must be true. Arriving at 1870 Versatile Drive, on left. There you go. So I don't need to fuel here. I fueled at the Flying J and hope so I could uh, so I can get my points. Let's see if they got parking here for me. I really hope they do. Drive 1.3 kilometers, then turn left on Hugh Allen Drive. Mandy, don't get ahead of yourself. We're doing that tomorrow. I'm gonna sleep first. Oh, and someone's in my spot too. Buying it. Oh, okay, let's see. Looks like there's some spaces in the back there. I just like, oh wait, there's one right here. Nice, I can nose in too. Nice quiet night that way, you know what I mean? Good enough for me. So in a spot like this, I can just back straight out, right? In the morning. And then I don't gotta deal with trucks beside me. <laughs> Here we go. And I'm right underneath the light too. That's perfect. Well, hello there. The face behind the voice. I know I didn't show my, my face much in today's vlog because there wasn't much going on. I guess you're well aware of that by now since we're at the end of our day and you're like, wait, where was the rest of the day? Some days in trucking are just like this, just not very far to go, not very much to see. I mean, it is beautiful scenery, but it got dark kind of quick because I took my time getting out of uh, the lower mainland there just because I, I'm honestly, I'm in no rush. So I stopped uh, twice on the way out at the gym and for fuel for a shower otherwise we could have been here probably like two or three hours ago it was 9 30 p.m right now i could have been here at 6 30 i guess wait nine eight seven six. yeah that's three hours <laughs> chevy what do you think how was the day today tell the good people don't be shy don't be shy you want to smile give me a smile Give him a smile. Let me help you. Should I help you? Should I help you? No? You can do it on your own? Give him a smile. Come on, come here. Okay, stretch for a stretch. Okay. Okay, now you're stretched. You're pulling on all my cords here. Okay. Come up here. Come here. Come here. Come on. Don't be careful where you put your paws, but you can come up. Okay, you don't want to. You're too scared. Okay, it's probably better that way. Probably better that way. Yeah. You're a heavy boy. I wouldn't want you to step on the wrong parts. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. You don't need to stick your nose there. That's weird, man. That's really weird. <laughs> he's been, he's such a good travel companion though. He's such a big puppy. Such a good boy. There was never a better boy. Did you know that? Don't tell Diesel. Don't tell Diesel. Chevy's actually uh, way better behaved at his age than Diesel was at the same age. Way better. <laughs> and as for Frankie, well, I wasn't there when Frankie was this age, so can't judge that. But from what I hear, from what Britt tells me, Chevy's the best dog ever. Learns so quickly, he's so smart. And all he wants to do is love you. Look at this, look at this. Chevy, tell him how much you love him. All of them. He just loves all of you so much. He doesn't even have the words to describe it. I love you guys. I love you guys so much. I, mean, I like that pole. 
Why are you staring at that pole? It's a good pole, man. It's a nice shade of gray. It is, isn't it? It's, it's actually, uh, it's uh, actually, uh, oh, never mind. You're colorblind. I get it. I get it. I get it. Everything is a shade of gray to you, right? <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. So, tomorrow, uh, like I said, 45 minutes to an hour north of here to Barrier, BC, uh, a load is waiting for us that we have to tarp. The lumber that we have tarp. That means it's fancy lumber. If they want the tarps on it, that means it's fancy, expensive lumber. Uh, it goes to Eagle River, Wisconsin. That's going to take me three full days. So uh, let's say I load up tomorrow. I'm only going to get like a half day in tomorrow because i got to load it and tarp it and then go from there. Uh, so tomorrow's Thursday. So I'm filming this on Wednesday. Uh, Thursday, Friday, and it's got to be there for Monday. So we have... Friday, Saturday, Sunday to get there. Three full days plus whatever I can get done tomorrow. So I'm probably going to end up just going straight there. I might pass by home just to give the wife a kiss and then continue on down the road. But I won't be stopping at home for any length of time this time. Because I'm thinking from Wisconsin, I'm probably going to go back to Owatonna for, in Minnesota for more glass. Which is probably coming back here to Surrey. And then maybe I can swing by home then. Or maybe Britt will be ready be able to come with me on the truck by then. I don't know. Because right now, Britt was supposed to be on the truck this trip already. She's going to come with for a little while on the truck uh, just so we can spend some good time together. It was my idea. It was my idea, and I'm really glad she agreed. So she was supposed to be here this trip, but our ice damming at home is causing problems. It's The water was leaking into the house. The reason we're doing metal roofing, just to respond to some of the comments you guys have said, you, some of you said that uh, metal roofing creates ice dams too. It, it it doesn't have the same problems as this because what happens is the house goes down and the veranda on the front meets the house roof and it creates a little valley here right and underneath two two and a half feet of snow the bottom well, on warmer days the water sinks to the bottom tries to get off the roof right but it gets stuck in this little valley and it creates a little ice dam uh, we have about four inches we had about four inches thick of ice right there and then the ice just the, the water rolls down the roof towards this ice dam and it dams up at the ice dam, right? That makes sense. And then it backs up, backs up, backs up, and then it gets really cold down to minus 30. And all of that water that was backing up there freezes. What does water do when it freezes? It expands. But it has nowhere to expand to because everything behind it is already all compacted and there's snow on there. So what it does is it goes up underneath the shingles. It pushes up underneath the shingles. And then the next time we have a really warm day and it starts to melt again, it's under the shingles now, right? And it starts to melt and the water goes through the nail holes that are underneath the shingles, through the nail holes, into the attic, down to the poly, and then it finds a hole to get into the house and falls down into the house. And it's a big mess. With metal roofing, you don't have that because there's no shingles for the ice to freeze up and go underneath, right? There may still be an ice dam. Which is unlikely because on metal roofing, usually the, the snow just slides right off the roof, right? You got to be careful that it doesn't fall onto your vehicles or onto people trying to come into your house. It usually slides right off. But even if there, even if hypothetically there was a hypothetical ice dam in that same spot with the metal roofing, we're not going to have the leaking issues, not the same issues because there's no shingles for that ice to freeze and go underneath and then come through you get what i'm saying so metal roofing will solve this problem 100 percent. that's why we're going with metal roofing we're actually uh having our guy come down tomorrow and give us an estimate he's going to look in our attic he's going to look at our roof he's going to measure everything out a little thirsty there buddy you're a loud drinker you know you have to let the whole world know when you're drinking it's not a bad thing buddy be loud be proud I was, I was just saying anyways to you guys that our, our guy is coming tomorrow. He's going to give us a, a quote of what it's going to cost. And then we're going to try and schedule a time for him to come and do the roof. Uh, we got to save up for a while yet. So we're going to try to get it done before next winter, before the rainy season and fall. Probably beginning of September, like first week of September or last week of August. That's that's right about when the dry season starts turning into the wet fall season so we want to do it before it starts raining all the time but we want to wait as long as possible to save up as much as possible so 
We'll get it done. We'll figure it out. We're adults. Welcome to adult life, Trucker Josh. Thanks for warning me. I should have listened. Everyone tried to warn me, but adulting is hard. All you kids out there who still live with your parents, I'm going to sound like a broken record to you, like every other adult that talks to you. Enjoy it. Because if your roof started leaking, guess what? Mom and dad would have to fix it. Once you have your own house, like I do, you got to fix it. Right? Once it's yours, you got to fix it. So uh, don't stay at mom and dad's forever. That's not what I'm encouraging you to do. Get out of the house, get your own place, but just be ready for it. Be ready for it. Don't be a, you know, 40 year old bachelor living in your parents' basement. Don't do that. Don't do that. Where is this conversation going? I have to end this conversation right now. So uh, subscribe if you haven't already. All of you new subscribers, we've been having a huge surge of growth recently. That's awesome. We're almost to our 100,000 subscriber mark. Awesome. Where are you all coming from? I'm so happy you're here. I'd love to know where you're from. Let me know down below in the comment section and let me know how you heard about my vlog. Very curious. I'm probably going to ask you guys again in the next couple of days as well, just because not everybody watches every day. And we're having a lot of new people show up here. And I'd, I'd love to know where you heard about the channel. Did someone give us a shout out or how, our numbers have just been growing really quickly recently. And that's awesome. Uh, I would just like to thank whoever gave me a shout out if I need to thank someone. Take care. I'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.